రూల్ బేస్డ్ ఫిజికల్ పాలసీ వర్సెస్ డిస్క్రేషనరీ ఫిజికల్ పాలసీ సో గో బ్యాక్ టు సే అప్ టు నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీస్ అండ్ యూ విల్ ఫైండ్ ఇఫ్ అనలైజ్ ద యూనియన్ ఫైనాన్స్ ద బడ్జెట్ సిచ్యువేషన్ ఆఫ్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా అండ్ ఆల్సో స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్స్ ఫైనాన్సెస్ యూ విల్ ఫైండ్ మెనీ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్స్ యూస్ టు హ్యావ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ సర్ప్లస్ ఫిజికల్ సర్ప్లస్ అండ్ దట్ మీన్స్ ద ఎక్స్పెండిచర్ యూస్ టు బి లెస్ దాన్ ద రెవెన్యూ దట్ యూస్ టు జనరేట్ బట్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ దాట్ దే హ్యాడ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ రెవెన్యూ రాదర్ దే హ్యాడ్ లెస్ స్పెండింగ్ అండ్ దట్ మీన్స్ ద ప్లానింగ్ వాజ్ ప్లానింగ్ వాజ్ దేర్ బట్ దెన్ సిన్స్ రిసోర్సెస్ వేర్ లెస్ దే యూస్ టు హ్యావ్ వెరీ కన్జర్వేటివ్ నో స్పెండింగ్ బట్ దెన్ దట్ పిక్చర్ చేంజెస్ సమ్ హెయర్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఎయిటీస్ అండ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఎయిటీస్ యూ సి సమ్ స్టేట్స్ ఆర్ నా గ్రాజువల్లీ ఎంటరింగ్ ఇన్ టు డెఫిసిట్స్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఆల్సో ఈజ్ ఎంటరింగ్ ఇన్ టు డెఫిసిట్స్ అండ్ దెన్ బై లేట్ ఎయిటీస్ ఆర్ అర్లీ నైంటీస్ యూ సీ దాట్ స్టేట్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ఎ వెరీ ప్రికారియస్ ఫిజికల్ సిచ్యువేషన్ మీన్స్ డెఫిసిట్ ఈజ్ వెరీ హై అండ్ ఈవెన్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఈజ్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ ద సేమ్ సిచ్యువేషన్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ దాట్ వెంట్ అప్ టు ద ఫైన అవర్ బ్యాలెన్స్ ఆఫ్ పేమెంట్ ద క్రైసిస్ దట్ వి ఎంటర్డ్ ఇన్ ఇన్ లెట్ ఎయిటీస్ అండ్ అర్లీ నైంటీస్ and uh, that's what exactly you know forced us to adopt this reform okay? and uh, the new economic policy or uh, the lpg liberalization privatization globalization policies were adopted so that was uh, uh, basically to manage the balance of payment crisis you know, that at government of india level the uh, manmohan singh basically presented the budget and then we went for a new economic policy uh, you know implementation but that was not uh, related to the state finances okay because it budget union budget and then you are adopting lpg uh, at national level so but that should also be reflected at the state level but i'm telling that again all states and national governments were in a very bad fiscal situation there's lot of deficit inflation rates are very high and and so on petroleum prices by the time also had gone up in 80s okay? so that led to basically this crisis so uh, if state governments will have more deficit what will be the problem that also you need to understand right if states have more deficits the problem will be that there are two ways you can interpret this problem one is that it creates inflationary pressure okay macro economics you no know, perspective you no know, says that if lot of spending happens in the economy it will create inflationary pressure and we also observed in 80s and early 90s a lot of inflationary pressure was already there in the economy and the second your borrowing level will go up right because your past borrowing is there you are adding every year borrowing new borrowing so your debt stock will be too much okay and if your debt stock is growing you will have to spend lot of money in the interest payment which could have been used for other developmental projects so interest payment is not a productive thing right so uh, that is one thing and then third thing would be that it is argued that if government spends lot of money or if it borrows lot of money from the market then the private investment will be crowding out crowding out thing you might have studied in macroeconomics so if government spends lot of money or if it government borrows lot of money from the market then private investment will be crowded out and you now what is this crowding out effect you no know, we study that in islm model graphs at that i am not going to you not know, do it here but in simple terms i can tell you that uh, when government borrows money from where it will borrow it will borrow from the market right so now whatever loanable funds are available in the system say bank, whether it is banks or lic or you no know, any other financial institution both government borrows from the agency and private sector also borrows from that agency okay and by 1991 role of private sector is also increasing okay quite you know, fast and we have already adopted liberation policy that means we are encouraging private sector should borrow more and it should mobilize funds from you no know, market for investment and now when there is a competition for borrowing from the public sector and private sector now obviously government can always you know you know uh, become uh, the you know bigger power and it can pay higher rate of interest also so now there is more demand for 
द एक्जिस्टिंग लोनेबल फंड अवेलेबल इन द सिस्टम एंड नाउ बोथ पीपल आर पार्टीज आर कंपीटिंग गवर्नमेंट एंड प्राइवेट सो वेन द डिमांड फॉर लोनेबल फंड आर हाई द इंटरेस्ट रेट विल ऑल्सो गॉप सो द कॉस्ट ऑफ बोरोइंग इज इंक्रीजिंग ना वेन द कॉस्ट ऑफ बोरोइंग इज इंक्रीजिंग गवर्नमेंट कैन अफोर्ड एनी कैंड ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बट प्राइवेट सेक्टर कैन नॉट अफोर्ड दिस मच सो दैट मीन्स प्राइवेट सेक्टर इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी क्राउडेड आउट बाय द पब्लिक इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दैट इज अ क्राउडिंग आउट आर्ग्यूमेंट देन सो वी डिस्कस थ्री थिंग दैट इट विल क्रिएट इन्फ्लेशनर प्रेसर लॉट ऑफ मनी विल गो फॉर द इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट्स and third it will crowd out the private investment so these are the you no know, bad consequences of the private uh, sorry too much of borrowing by the government or too much of deficit so by you no know, so this was also you no know, recognized at national level and because it was not situation of only one state it was the situation of all states and uh, then we used to have planning commission then in 90s okay, and uh, so the council is called as national development council ndc where the prime minister is to be the chairman then the deputy chairman used to be you know uh, uh, the de facto chairman basically the planning commission's deputy chairman then all chief ministers are member of national development council so this was discussed in the national development council meeting in 1991 then all states are you no know, dis- you know, in a, going through a very precarious fiscal situation so you should do something for this Okay, and uh, then a committee was set up okay, to review the fiscal situation of all the states, and this was proposed in National Development Council. So a committee was also set up, and uh, the committee was chaired by B. J. Patnaik. Okay, that time, you know, B. J. Patnaik was probably very popular chief minister then. So he headed this committee, okay, and uh, then this committee submitted the report. Uh, I think in 1993. Okay, and uh, in the National Development Council, it submitted the report. So then it recommended a lot of uh, you know, uh, disciplinary measures that should be adopted by both the government of India and the state governments. Because government of India also had bad fiscal situation, state governments also had bad fiscal situation. So it recommended a lot of disciplinary measures for both the government of India and state governments. Now, what are those measures? that we should bring down the revenue expenditure okay all the revenue expenditure should be now brought down and uh, <clears throat> then we should uh, uh, okay how to bring down the revenue expenditures we have to cut down all the unproductive expenditures okay so then how do identify the unproductive expenditures so the quick target was that all loss making public sector undertakings should be privatized because it doesn't make any sense if one public sector undertaking is not making profit rather it is taking budgetary support that means there is a loss of say 1000 crore and then how do you know recover those losses so you get a financial support from the budget so that means tax payers money will be now given to one underperforming public sector undertakings you now which is incurring losses so the budgetary support of uh, the losses in public sector undertakings should be discouraged that's what discussed and uh, then com- it also recommended uh, that so all the loss making public sector undertakings should be divested or it should be sold out okay. privatized completely and uh, s- state governments also should do this and uh, in in a few government departments government also thought that there is over staffing okay that staffing means lot of people are there they don't add anything to the productivity and that was reality now i have also told you that no, there is to be no peons clerks stenos okay and by the time computer has also started coming in and when there are computers uh, there is no need of any steno in fact uh, saturday i had gone to finance department and uh, i saw a girl sitting in the office of uh, no one secretary then uh, i because i had gone to meet the secretary so then i said no what is your job here she told i am a steno i told uh, is there there is a place for stenos at all nowadays okay because everything is computerized so in one can just type it no or instead of dictating you no know, the notes to somebody just type it okay 
but it is still existing but then then we used to have you know, for every you know officer there will be one steno you know, and then there will be a lot of peons who will be carrying files and all that so uh, and i have already explained how people were appointed okay, in different government establishments and even in public sector undertakings that also led to the loss making of public sector undertakings so that so in the government departments uh, there should be you know uh, introduction of voluntary uh, retirement and compulsory retirement also so in some departments if you feel that this department is not doing anything you no know, ask them for compulsory retirement and if you feel that you no know, people are unproductive you can also go for voluntary retirement then this will give a financial package so that they should pack up and go back to their home in fact many people did this also many i think if i remember correctly in odisha the lift irrigation department you no know, employees were asked to go for compulsory retirement okay and uh, similarly in many other public sector undertaking even in other departments line departments they were asked to go for you no know, voluntary retirement thing and many psus were you no know, this in divested also so this process started but then many states did not take it very seriously okay and so the, you know, the committee recommended all these things that we should do all these things and then we should reduce the employments okay because a lot of revenue goes for you no know, usually for the teachers and doctors because the numbers are really large in these two departments you no know, teacher primary school ms school no university college university so lot of you no know, people are there and uh, then uh, health sector so uh, there should be freezing of the employment that's what uh, that that also recommended but then states did not take it seriously because ndc really you no know, did not have the carrot and stick policy now if you don't give incentive or if you don't penalize anybody then nobody listens right people listen only when you threaten them or you incentivize them so that way ndc did not have such a mechanism that's why many states really did not take it seriously and by 1997 the fifth pay commission recommendation was implemented in 1996 the report was you no know, introduced and then by 1997 1998 many states implemented that fifth pay commission recommendation so the fifth pay commission recommendation led to uh, basically rise in the revenue expenditure of all states because you have to increase the salary and fifth fifth pay commission salary was also substantially higher than the fourth pay commission salary so many state governments entered into a debt trap many states okay because i i remember again uh, during uh, my college days uh, the teachers primary school teachers you know even college teachers would not get their salary even in 3 months they will have to wait for you know, 3 months to get their regular salary because government will tell that no we don't have sufficient money in the treasury so you just wait whenever money comes we will give you the salary so people used to get salary quarterly okay for 3 months comes in bulk amount uh, uh, you know and then another three months you don't get salary and that was situation of all states not only in odisha everywhere it was the situation and uh, by uh, 99 no you see that uh, by 99 2000 you see that no the fiscal situation has deteriorated no everywhere and uh, so then it you know states were quite concerned that no our uh, we are now doing too much of borrowing and uh, states used to <clears throat> go for overdraft all states okay means if you don't have sufficient money to uh, do any kind of uh, say, to pay the salary of you know uh, the employees uh, then you have to borrow from somewhere and so that is called overdraft means you don't have money but you no know, you rbi gives you money so that you use that money for paying the salary of uh, the government employees and even doing the day to day transactions and uh, so then that was again not a very bad a good thing because you know if you don't have money and then capital expenditure is declining capital expenditure means productive you no know, new projects you no know, cannot come up and uh, then lot of money uh, is going for interest payments so the revenue expenditure uh, in fact the salary payments uh, used to be somewhere like 80 percentage 90 percentage of the total revenue receipts of the governments and when you add interest payment so salary pension and interest payment together 
used to exceed the revenue mobilization of the state. So then there is no scope for capital expenditure. Okay? And uh, then interest burdens also started increasing so, you know, substantially. So in such a situation, the finance commission you know, uh, was uh, alerted by the president. So when 11th finance commission was appointed by the president of India, so what will be the term of 11th finance commission? Use the formula and tell me. Don't remember. 11 plus. 11 plus 2005. Huh. So 2000 to 2005 would be the term of 11th finance. So by the time, okay. So that means the report will be submitted before 2000, right? Because the recommendation will be implemented from 2000 to 2005. So by 99 or so, the 11th finance commission recommended that now we should stop this discretionary fiscal policy and we should go for a rule-based fiscal policy. What is this discretionary fiscal policy? No, you don't keep any target like what should be your salary expenditure in a year, what should be your interest payments, what should be your pension payment, what should be your planned expenditure, what should be your capital expenditure. No such planning. That is called discretionary, right? So you wanted, okay, the finance minister, chief minister thought that, okay, this year we'll have more spending and you increase the allocation. Next year you thought, oh, we will not do, last year we did enough, so we are tired of doing many things. So reduce this. Or we, you thought that we don't have money, so reduce the expenditure. Okay? That means somewhere you have surplus, somewhere you have deficit, you don't have consistency in the allocation to different states. So uh, it was, so that, that means before, uh, say, 2004-05, no, it used to be all discretionary fiscal policy. And the 11th Finance Commission recommended that we should get into a rule-based fiscal you know, framework. And uh, that means Government of India should bring a legislation for going you know, for a uh, rule-based fiscal policy. Okay? And a legislation should be brought by the parliament. Now, what is the legislation? Uh, a legislation for rule-based fiscal policy and then government of India brought a legislation okay? and that is called FRBM, FRBM, Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act and that was brought in the year 2003 because Finance Commission recommended in 99 or 2000. Then it takes some time you know, to convince and then bring a bill and then implement. You, know, you have to discuss this in the parliament. So, a FRBM Act was enacted in the parliament. Okay. And uh, what is this act? <clears throat> that we have to have a rule-based fiscal you know, uh, policy. And when you say fiscal policy, what all things are included in that? Taxation and expenditure. Two things. So how to raise taxes and how to uh, manage the expenditure, whether to increase expenditures or whether to reduce expenditures, what should be the component of different expenditures, all those things. And uh, so once government of India, okay, so what are the uh, no, targets of this FRBM, this rule-based fiscal policy, that the revenue deficit should be zero. Revenue deficit of government of India should be zero. And fiscal deficit should be below 3 percentage. Okay, 3 percentage or below 3 percent, equivalent to or less than 3 percentage. And uh, then the debt burden of you know, the government of India or state government should be brought down. They had a timeline no, in which you know, how much targets should be achieved. But the most important were Basically, that uh, the revenue deficit should be zero and fiscal deficit should be below three percent. And you cannot achieve this target overnight, right? So they were given five years time. That means from 2003 to 2008. Okay, so by 2008, government of India should achieve these targets: that revenue deficit should be zero and fiscal deficit should be below three percent. And uh, then government of India also told that the state governments also should bring such a legislation. Okay? 
because it was also written in the finance commission that okay government of india should bring such a legislation and state governments should also adopt such legislation so that you know you can adopt you know, fiscal discipline and uh, then states were also you know asked to bring such legislation and brought states also brought say odisha brought it in 2004 many other states brought it in 2004 5 so first you bring the frbm act and then you implement frbm rule and uh, then you get a target so but that means from by 2008 9 or 9 10 depending on which state you know brought the legislation in which year you have to achieve these targets i think you no know, some students would ask you no know, why 3 percentage fiscal deficit why not 5 percent why not 10 percentage why zero revenue deficit okay. somebody should ask these questions you no know, whether there is a magic number or these are lucky numbers of the finance minister no you may ask this 3 is my lucky number anyway okay so uh, but my lucky number doesn't matter right no, for the minister okay. no there are actually no uh, reasons behind it no 5 3 percentage fiscal deficit Of course, they did some. Cal- in, these are report, written. Everything is written in Eleven Finance Commission report. So that's why I will recommend you to read that chapter of Eleven Finance. All the stories. Of course, you will not get it in one Finance Commission report. If you read all Finance Commission reports, you will get this. But it starts from Eleven Finance Commission. So, uh, how this three percent is arrived at? Uh, no, they calculated that you no know, our national you no know, aggregate debt GDP you no know, ratio. Should be you no know, somehow you no know, brought down to sixty five percentage, thirty percentage should be by government of India, and twenty five percentage by the state governments. All state government will also borrow, right? So all state governments can borrow up to twenty five percentage of their state GST, and at national level, thirty percentage because you no know, government of India has more responsibility than the state governments. That is one side. But that time, you no, know, by two thousand or late. 90s our debt gst ratio was almost 100 percentage you no know, 95 percentage so they had a plan how to bring it down from say 95 percentage to say 65 percentage so it's a huge target and even many states had also like 30 percentage you know 40 percentage debt gst ratio so that should be brought down <clears throat> and uh, huh, so i was telling like why three percentage So that three percent is basically kept this target that if every year you borrow this much, then what will be your past debt stock? You know, because three percent fresh borrowing you are doing every year. So if you do it say for uh, say you know ten years or fifteen years, and then if government of India also does, then you can achieve these targets that thirty percent is of government of India, twenty five percent of the state government. But that is not a very convincing thing. If you that look at three percent, most of the people say that this was inspired by the European Union. this was inspired by the european union and see that is also time when europe european union is born european union is born in 2000 right the euro currency was launched in 2001 that's why in the new millennium a new currency is born so lot of new things were happening in 2001 and uh, so european union is taking you no know, uh, shape uh, somewhere in 1994 okay? and uh, then lot of debates and discussions are happening within european union and they thought that so to introduce a new currency we should have some common fiscal conditions and because all current all countries would have one currency euro but if your fiscal conditions are different then how can you have a common currency see because see no again it may not you know look very convincing for you to understand the process you have to understand that now an economy is governed by two set of policies one is monetary policy other is fiscal policy okay now you are going to have common monetary policy which common currency means common monetary policy now to do that if your fiscal situation is different then your effectiveness of a common monetary policy will be very weak so to you have to ensure a common fiscal platform then only you can have a common currency okay so to join european union it was decided that all member nations have to ensure this fiscal condition by 2000 then only we can launch a new currency and the conditions were same zero revenue deficit 3 percentage uh, fiscal deficit okay and uh, 
that was just implemented in Indian context also. So there is no lucky number or no formula, other formula. We just copied okay, that, okay, European Union did this. So because so 3% is a level. So that's why sometimes people are critical of these numbers also. Now why? Because people thought that, see, in advanced countries, less expenditure is fine. 3% fiscal deficit means 3% capital expenditure. Okay? So in advanced countries, less capital expenditure is acceptable because they have already grown enough. But in developing countries, we need to spend more. Okay? Because you know, our, our needs are you know, much higher than the advanced countries. But anyway, whatever may be the criticism, we implemented this policies. Okay, we just copied the European Union you know, things. And these were all written in, in what is called Maastricht Treaty. Okay, you can Google something called Maastricht Treaty. Maastricht Treaty, Maastricht is a place in Netherlands, right? So there the European Union Treaty was done that to launch Euro currency, all member countries signed the Maastricht Treaty. So the member can, you know, countries will gradually you know, go to Euro Euro. Uh, European Union. So the three percentage and zero revenue deficit are basically you know, copy paste from the Maastricht Treaty Agreement. You can Google Maastricht Treaty, you know, and read it. You know, because I, again, I, these are taught in international trade. The Maastricht Treaty is taught in international trade. I used to teach it in the university. So <clears throat> okay, so that's anyway. So we adopted that. The government of India brought this legislation. It asked the state governments to bring such legislation. And uh, but then why will the states listen to this? Just like you know, before you no know, budget nine led committee, NDC recommended states did not listen. They could have also ignored this, right? But then finance commission used carrot and stick policy. So better you accept this, otherwise you will be penalized. Okay? So you no, know, it's not that it can really impose any penalty on anybody, but it basically incentivized. Okay? And how did it incentivize? The finance commission said that the member, the the states that adopt these uh, reforms, you know, bring such legislation and achieve these targets by 2008 or 9, within five years basically, within five years of the enactment of the legislation, the states should achieve these targets. So those states will be rewarded. Now, how will you reward? You give them more money. That is one. Second. In the past, I have told you that the states used to borrow huge amount of money from the government of India through planning commission. So since states had a lot of borrowing from the government of India, finance commission said that we will reduce the interest rates and some component of your borrowing will also be waived. You don't have to repay. So that's a big you know, uh, you know, incentive for the states. And... Uh, in fact, if you read the budget speeches, you know, you'll, you'll get to know this. Prafu Lagadai was the finance minister then, okay, uh, when this FRB was implemented in, in Odisha. These are written in the budget speeches also, okay. You no, know, so, so budget speeches have a lot of, you know, histories to understand, okay. And the finance history of state can be, you know, read through the budget speeches. So, you, you'll you know, read this. And I have read budget speeches of Prafu Lagadai, Pansan and Kanamgo. So, these are all mentioned in Odisha's. Why I'm saying what is such thing? You'll find similar stories in other states also. Uh, you see that uh, uh, so the states now no, there was a competition among the states to accept all the recommendation of the 11th Finance Commission. So we were given a target of 2008 that by 2008 you should achieve these you no know, targets. Odisha achieved all these targets by 2005. Before three years. Within one year. Yes, within one year. Just no. Anyway, the discussions have started happening into no from two thousand, right? Because the finance commission has already recommended. And uh, so, if you look at the finances of Odisha government, two thousand four five, you see there is no revenue deficit at all. And in one year, if I remember correctly, probably in two thousand five six, Odisha was probably one of the rare states that recorded fiscal surplus. Fiscal surplus is a very bad thing for any state, particularly a state like Odisha. It's not acceptable under any circumstances, but state did. So, <clears throat> because there is a competition, because in fact, Odisha government had a lot of borrowing, you know, and uh, so it thought that if we reduce the 
revenue deficits then we'll get all these you know rewards from the finance commission and who which state would like to miss this opportunity that you will not repay a part of your loan your interest rates will be brought down and you will get the extra financial packages for this so it is a purely carrot policy if you don't do this you lose all this money and uh, but then how did the states achieve these targets that we need to understand okay now when you say that all of a sudden your revenue deficit vanishes how does that happen so government of odisha you no know, or even all other state governments in fact a few states did not enact also this fr bim west bengal did not brought this uh, did not bring this uh, legislation they brought it somewhere in 2009 10 they waited for so much of time and uh, i think punjab also delayed a little bit tripura probably delayed a little bit but most other states you know brought this legislation but how did they achieve this in fact odisha is one of the rare states you know that uh, you know achieved the targets within just two years okay uh, after you know, because 2003 at national level you brought this legislation and by 2005 revenue deficit vanishes so there is you know the method methods were that government completely put a freeze on the all new recruitments you cannot appoint anybody new and if at all some new appointments will happen that will happen on contractual basis because some some appointments happened okay like which appointments uh, by the time you no know, service shiksha abhiyan was launched in the country okay and uh, so government of india said that We will bear the expenditure because ninety percent when service sector abhijan was launched, the scheme was that ninety percent of the money will come from center, ten percent will come from the state. So, government thought that only so money is coming from center. Why should we not take this benefit? And after a few years, national health mission was also launched. So, whatever recruitments happened in service sector abhijan, all teachers were appointed with a salary of one thousand five hundred rupees. and that that will not be in the official wage rate you know of uh, you know the unskilled workers per day 50 rupees right 1500 rupees 100 rupees per month means 50 rupees per day to a teacher your unskilled worker gets 100 rupees or you no know, 78 rupees at least in i'm in 2000 2000 the 2003 4 i'm telling so but that was the condition but most importantly so there is a complete freeze on the all recruitments so finance department issued a letter to all departments that no department can appoint anybody you know uh, without consent of the finance department now if you appoint anybody we will not give you money no salary so appoint that means no appointment will happen virtually right that is still acceptable but one more point in all the recommendation the finance you no know, uh, department did that you will have to reduce the sanction positions Okay, whatever sanction positions were there, you have to you know cut it by ten percent or twenty percent. In different departments, they fix the targets. Say for just to you know put the number in perspective, how this impacts you know, the states or any institution. So in Uttar University Economics Department, we had a sanction position of eleven faculty members. So there will be some professor, there will be some associate professors, and there will be some assistant professors. And we had eleven positions, and uh, Then government said that okay, you go for ten percent, no, twenty percent days reduction. So two positions were abolished. So now in Uttar Pradesh University, the sanction position is nine. So out of eleven positions, two positions are completely abolished. So you cannot appoint any more two people. So maximum you can appoint nine. And the if at all no, <clears throat> and since there is a freeze, no, what happened uh, uh, when anybody retires from any department? You don't appoint in in those places. So what happened? You know, just to give a you know scenario, Uttar University had such a situation when I joined in 2010. I was a student in 2004, and I joined in Uttar University in 2010. So when we joined, there are only four faculty members in the department. Okay, so one uh, head of the department and uh, another you know, one professor, and then two lecturers. And uh, then you have to teach how many papers? You no, know, five, five, ten. Ten papers will be taught by four faculty members. That is next to impossible. Right? Then you cannot offer any elective course. And remember, earlier eleven people used to do that. Now only four people. So that means suppose you have now two sections. You no, know, okay, you have to go to first year student, second year, MPhil, PhD. So that means four batches of students are there and four teachers are available. 
and HOD also has to attend different meetings and all that. So then how will you run the classes? Okay. And university teachers are not you know, like you know, primary school teachers that you teach entire day or your ABCD alpha letters. So you have to read and teach. So then you don't offer any specialization. So, okay, so that was the situation. That means for a long time. See, that means from 2000 to 2010, no appointments happened in the department. And uh, whoever joined, joined only on contractual basis. Primary school teachers, 1,500 rupees salary. And that took uh, six years on contract. Initially, that six-year contract was also not written anywhere. It was just written that you will work for, you will work as a contractual teacher with salary of 1,500. And this will be renewed uh, before th the expiry of 365 days. So all teachers, contract will expire on 364 days. Not even six, I think one month salary they did not get. So out of 12 months, 11 months salary they will get, one month they will not get any salary. So again, uh, that contract will be renewed and uh, that's how they were appointed. And, and even other, other departments also. So no new appointments happen. Similarly, doctors also, because maximum employees were Appoint, no, available in the teaching department and in the hospitals, health department. So, health and education departments were badly affected. Okay? Primary school teach, you know, schools went empty, college, you know, in fact, the best colleges of Odisha, like BJB Ravensa colleges, uh, no, had just one faculty member. Say, you know, I have read in the newspaper also that chemical, you no, know, chemistry department had only head of the department, nobody else, no tell, nobody, nothing. So means complete freeze no, on the new recruitments. And uh, then other things like you no know, um, uh, disinvestment of public sector undertakings uh, uh, and uh, all that thing happened. So that's how uh, Odisha government, uh, and then you uh, bring down the capital expenditure, don't spend anything for any new projects. So that's how government of Odisha and many other state governments brought down the a revenue deficit and uh, then you, you see that from 2005-06 onwards Odisha government uh, has maintained revenue surplus okay? and uh, uh, fiscal deficit uh, no, uh, never is 3 percentage. Odisha government's fiscal deficit you will see 2 percentage, 1 percentage. That's a different finance commission no, have asked the chief minister Navin Patnai, why are you not spending money? Then Navin Patnai, you know, Navin Patnai never answers okay? because why I am saying it during our finance commission visits to state government. Uh, no, the chairman will ask no, to chief minister. Chief minister will be sitting other round. It will be a huge table, round table. And so one side, government department official, other side, finance commission officials will be sitting. So why he was asking Navin Patnaik, no? So why is the state not ask, spending money? In Odisha, Navin Patnaik never responds. So that time, Jugal Mahapatra was the chief secretary. So he responded, no, uh, sir, we are trying to improve it gradually. Okay. So that answer was not satisfactory. But anyway, so many state governments brought down the revenue expenditures and capital expenditures. Now, what are the consequences? If there aren't no teachers and doctors in the hospitals and schools, then it will compromise on the quality of the schools. Okay. So that's how most of the state governments fell in line. And they achieved this target. So you will see that if you, you know, do any analysis of the budget, uh, you will see except a few states like Kerala, West Bengal, Punjab, Tripura, uh, maybe Arunachal Pradesh, all other states have complied with the finance commission targets. So the this, this process starts from 11 finance commission. Then 12th Finance Commission, 13th Finance Commission, 14th Finance Commission, 15th Finance Commission. Everywhere you see that there is some indicator relating to the fiscal discipline of the state. Like in the 15th Finance Commission also, there is a criteria for the horizontal devolution. And what is the criteria? Fiscal efforts of the state. And what is the fiscal effort? That your tax GSDP ratio should increase. So the states that have shown a rise in the tax GSTP ratio will get the incentive. Otherwise, you don't get money. Similarly, 12th, 13th and 14th Finance Commission, 12th and 13th Finance Commission particularly, have recommended in their report that the states that have shown their efforts to control fiscal you know, deficits will be rewarded. That means if last year, your fiscal deficit was 
say five percentage of your GSTP. Next year, we should bring it down to by some percentage. So your revenue should go up and your expenditure should go down. That is called fiscal discipline. And uh, so if you do that, then only you will be getting money from the finance commission. So that means all states are now very much scared of finance commission. That means if you don't achieve this rule-based fiscal policy or if you don't comply with the FIRBM targets, then you will be penalized. You will not get money. So all states now maintain fiscal discipline. So the situation changed so that in 2000, in the year 2000, even in fact when I was a student in 2002 to 2004 as a MA student at Kal University, I still remember very clearly there was a budget. There was a discussion in open panel that was organized by Sambad Samarajan Patnaik, and the title was Odisha Runa Jantare. Okay, means Odisha is in debt trap. And then how to escape this trap? That was the discussion. That happened in uh, uh, that 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 discussion happened in uh, Unit Three, you no know, exhibition ground. So as students who had gone there, because our teacher was one of the panelists, Professor K. V. Das, Samarajan Patnaik, Prasad Harichandan, these are the people. Prasad Harichandan spoke really, and then Panchanan Kanungu, all these people were there. So uh, we we had gone there to listen to them, like. So what is the way out? Every day, you know, it will come in newspaper. Odisha doesn't have money to pay the salary and interest of the employees. So that was the situation in 2000, 2002. And by 2007-8, you know, if you see, now state governments had enough of money in the Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank used to give money. Now these people are having deposits in the Reserve Bank. That means states are not spending money. In fact, an article has been written by... Uh, Thomas, no, uh, what is uh, Thomas Isaac? Uh, you, you, will, you should read this article. Why are states uh, not spending? Thomas Isaac. You should all of you should read this paper. Uh, <clears throat> um, EPW. Economic and uh, political weekly. Yeah, you should do this. Thomas Hedek and R. Ram Kumar. Okay, I will share this article to all of you. Okay, so this was the situation. So, why do states not spend? This is the title. Thomas Hedek was a finance minister then. Okay, when he wrote this of Kerala. And uh, so, in this article, basically, he has shown. And how uh, states maintained, you know, a lot of uh, revenue, uh, sorry, maintained a lot of deposits, you know, in the, uh, uh, in the Reserve Bank. Okay? And uh, that is not a uh, good indicator. Okay? States should spend money. Okay? And uh, why are they not spending? Where is that? Is it down? Access denied? Mm, why? How many? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know whether the payments have been done or okay. Uh, okay, so we will check no, with the okay. So no, no, you have to download this. <laughs> now I cannot download this. Now which year? This is two thousand six, no? Okay, so we can download it. Wait. Jester, because the old articles cannot be downloaded, so you can go to this. Yeah, because uh, we have taken the access uh, to download only five or old articles. Yeah. So I'm saving it here. Huh? It will take this article. Anyway, so the point is that the story is this. Uh, where to stand? Yeah. So this is article. Okay. And uh, an exploration of the phenomenon of cash surpluses and the FRBM legislation. So it's a must read article for all of you. So otherwise, you know, I am only giving Bhasan. <laughs> okay. Very interesting article to read. So, uh, yeah, so uh, now a lot of changes are happening. And then states were given a target to borrow. Okay, the debt GSTP ratio of the states can be up to 25% of the, of the states. 
say for odisha also 25 percent and for many other states a little bit difference like some states are given 30 percent days some states are given 25 percent but mostly 25 to 30 percent days and the ultimate target was given to bring it down to 25 percent days so i told that 40 percent of center 25 percent of the state overall 65 percent is of uh, you know, the borrowing of the burden so uh if you analyze again Odisha's you no know, debt stock as a percentage of GSTP after 2004-5, you no know, Odisha was successful to bring it down to as low as 15 percentage. Okay, so that means what does it mean? That you are not using your fiscal space to spend money. Center is telling that you can borrow up to 25 percentage of our GSTP. And our chief minister said, no, 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 we are happy with 15 percent of our borrowing. We are maintaining fiscal surplus and we are uh, uh, you know, having um, revenue surplus and, and so on. Okay. So, uh, so when I was telling that I did the assignment in the NIPFP, you know, as a, in the refresher course, my you know, article was uh, uh, Odisha's fiscal you know, uh, discipline, Odisha's fiscal consolidation path. Cutting the Odisha's, uh, Odisha's fiscal consolidation, hopefully it will be absolute in our path. Cutting the mass fat or uh, no, uh, trimming the fat, okay, trimming the, trimming the fat or cutting the mass fat. Oops, I wrote uh, that is available in the uh, academia. Yeah. Mm, I do. Yeah. So uh, you have to download it and you have to log in. Okay. So I think I cannot download it here also. <laughs> okay. So I I wrote this essay in NIPP. Okay. And uh, why I wrote this? You know, why the title? You no, know, you should understand also. There is a story behind it. The World Bank, you no, know, basically had advised Odisha to adopt a fiscal discipline path. That if you do all these things, then only you can achieve these targets. But Odisha used to borrow a lot of money from World Bank and uh, and uh, uh, DFID, Department for International Development. That is the wing of UK government. So this is basically aid agency of uh, UK. And uh, so Odisha uh, used to borrow a lot of money from World Bank and uh, and uh, uh, DFID when we had a lot of crisis in 2000. And uh, so they had only advised to adopt a consolidation path so that contractual employment uh, and the voluntary retirement scheme, compulsory retirement scheme, all these things were suggested by the World Bank and DFID. That's why many people used to write critical notes about World Bank and I and uh, DFID during early 2000. And uh, so then World Bank in a report had praised Odisha Okay, that uh, Odisha has achieved the fiscal consolidation path and while doing this, it has you know, trimmed you know, some of its fat. Okay. So uh, that's why I had criticized whether it is trimming the fat or cutting the muscle. Okay. And I also had written in that article whether Odisha had fat at all. It's a poor state, right? And uh, so your needs are so much. You have to spend money in providing say different supports like food uh, no, and housing, then appointing teachers, doctors. So where was the fat of Odisha? Okay, and uh, now when Odisha is going for dieting, and it's just like you no know, beggars are saying that we don't we are dieting. Okay, people will laugh at it. So basically, I had written that you no know, in in this uh, article. So. Uh, so that means even the poorer states you know, were impacted the worst. And because uh, they had the needs, so developed states we can understand, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Punjab, you know, they are already spending too much, so they are not trying to achieve a little bit of discipline. But again, that is not possible also. Once you, so we have read you know, all the consumption theories, that once you reach you know, a higher level of expenditure, you cannot bring it down, whether it is for the state or for the individuals. Okay? And uh, uh, so, uh, but even... But yeah, for Odisha and many other poor states, we saw that uh, poor states in, in, gen in general achieved the discipline. The rich states did not achieve the discipline. Now that's why I'm telling Kerala, Punjab, you know, Punjab is the only state that gives you know, higher 
pay scale than the national pay commission recommendations okay so if you know uh, government of india announces some amount of d they will announce a little more so and kerala no never listen to finance commission because you know, it says that the expenditure you know, they had a very valid argument they said that the salary of the teachers and doctors are not revenue expenditures these are capital expenditures because this creates human capital no they have argued this even in the uh, in the state's memorandum to the finance commission they used to write these words so they never complied with the finance commission targets but of course they they have it's not that they did not get any money but then odisha got a lot of benefits because of these disciplines but by achieving these disciplines you are compromising on your you no know, quality of public you know public goods so anyway so that's how we have now come to this state but yeah so i am now telling all the story of of the states now states most of the states have fallen in line in fact if you look at the uh, total fiscal deficit of all states combined fiscal deficit of all states uh, no you should again uh, go to this reports go to rbi website rbi dot org dot in and uh, <clears throat> so these are your references i am showing it to here and uh, so very high is that yeah i bring go to publications go to annual publication now go to review of uh, handbook of strategy in indian economy okay, you go to review of budget state finances a study of budgets you can download the full report state finances and uh, fiscal position of state governments yeah look at this uh, major fiscal uh, major deficit indicators starting from 2004 5 to 2019 20 before covid came what is happening what is your fiscal deficit gross fiscal deficit is in green color it has never touched 3% even for all states together you know that the blue line that has been drawn is the 3% benchmark combined deficit of all states can go up to 3% but it has never reached in a few years only 2004 5 then in 2009 10 and then uh, after that you no know, some udaya scheme is there so it is not there only in covid crisis time now this is increasing okay so what does it mean states stopped spending money i mean stopped means what reduced it substantially that say thomas ajay road why are states not spending look at revenue deficit you see no revenue deficit here if it is in the upper part then it is deficit if it is in the down side it is surplus that means a few states see between um, 2005 6 to 2008 9 maintained revenue surplus so bad situation you are not appointing teachers doctors and you are having surplus even that continued beyond that you know 10 11 to 2012 13 only in 9 10 Now you see no there is a deficit why that is the year of crisis financial crisis okay and in fact uh, you should all since i am explaining on the focusing on the states i have not told anything about government of india but for government of india what happened government of india was almost trying to achieve the target see because this is becoming legally binding okay so legally binding again uh, under the frmm legislation the finance minister has to present a few more documents along with the budget in february the budget you no know, is presented so earlier it used to be you no know, revenue budget and uh, and met general budget so as per the frbm act you have to the finance minister will have to produce four or five frbm documents what are those frbm documents fiscal you no know, discipline documents uh in fact i had uh, shown it for odisha also like if i show you uh, odisha dot jp dot in along with the budget what all documents have to be presented go to finance
publication budget budget of uh, yeah this year see now general budget is there and along with that you have to present fiscal strategy report fiscal risk statement okay, and frbm statement okay so these documents have to be now added to the uh, so along with the budget document you have to submit one frbm statement and uh, then uh, let us see you know what uh, what all things are there in the fiscal statement since you know i am very frequently using this website i am opening it but for government of india and for other states also you will find similar things so one is fiscal policy strategy statement strategy means in coming 5 years how are you going to achieve these targets it's not that no you will just tell no whatever so you have to check out a plan so fiscal policy strategy statement you have to publish second component is macroeconomic situation because your fiscal achievement can will depend on macroeconomic situation. if your growth rate goes down how will you get revenue and then state government will have to give stimulus package so you have to talk about the macroeconomic situation third prospects of the state's economy and related fiscal strategy and then fiscal policy for the specific year okay and that in, then includes tax policy okay and uh, other other component so expenditure policy government borrowing and lending things see you know here you no know, look at the debt gst ratio of government of odisha it is not even now uh, debt you no know, blue line is below 15 percentage we have not you no know, reached 20 percent you no know, many times you no know, that comes in uh, news items that you no know, odisha's per capita borrowing is 25000 rupees okay. it is fact okay that a new born baby also has you no know, that's what you know, they capture in the news item that a new born baby in odisha also has 15 rupees no 15 rupees not 25 15 rupees you no know, uh, borrowing that's what they criticize but then uh, i defend in, my, in many public forums I, I have told them that these media people should also know that the per capita income the newborn baby also has a per capita income of one th one lakh five thousand rupees so if you are earning one lakh five thousand rupees you cannot borrow fifteen thousand rupees you can borrow and you can repay so but the media people don't know that no how much borrowing is permissible and sustainable they don't know Okay, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, so this document was now added. The, the FRBM Act said that when the finance minister presents a budget, you know, that uh, demand for grants or budget at a glance, all these things, it will also have to submit this FRBM statement, which will include all these things. That's what you see the document. Before 2004 5, we will not see this document. So, this is available only after 2004 5. Okay, so state governments have now achieved the target, but you know how bad situations are because states are not spending anything. But for government of India, what happened? Government of India was almost trying to achieve the targets, almost. Okay, although they were never very close, but they were trying. But what happened? See, 2008-9 was the terminal year by which you should achieve these targets, and that is the year of financial crisis. Okay, so when there is a financial crisis. The stabilization function is with the government of India. Stabilization function is not with the state governments. Okay? I have taught you know that what should be the role of the government. So stabilization function is with the government of India. And it is written in the constitution also. So when the stabilization function is with the government of India, then finance, so the government of India has to give the stimulus package. That means, and it did also. So it reduced the tax rates. And it increased the spending, basically budget allocation for MG energies. Okay? So then, when you, you are reducing your tax rates, your revenue collection will go down, and you cannot achieve the target of zero revenue deficit. Similarly, fiscal deficit would, would go beyond three percentage. Okay? So, uh, if you uh, read, uh, no, India this year's budget, uh, India budget, okay? you, you can see these deficit trends. Okay, and uh, in my uh, presentation in the YouTube, I have done that, but you can also see here budget at a glance. Mm. Look at the deficit of uh, government of India. Okay. So, uh, what is happening? The
the budget, no, all the deficit indicators. So eight nine. Okay, before that, no numbers are not available, okay, and uh, but I think we can check it, you know, somewhere else. India public finance statistics. No, this is the you know, document where you get all you know, facts related to you know, yeah, government of India. Fiscal deficits. This is the overall budgetary position of the center and states. Budgetary position of the center. Yeah, so uh, you can just you know just to get a comparative picture, go to look at the revenue deficit position and fiscal deficit. So we had uh, in 1991 3.17 revenue deficit, and uh, that goes up to 5.23 in 2009 9 and 10. Uh, so government of India never basically complied, and that happened also because of uh, the 2008 crisis. And uh, then look at the, uh, yeah, so then it had, uh, so for the government of India, it, it, I told again it was never close. Look at the fiscal deficit, 6.42 in 1991, 2000, 5.646, 9, it again went up. Okay, then again it was coming down, 11, 12, 5.59. Which one? No, the deficit. No, okay. So this is revenue surplus. If there is no read the numbers, deficit is in negative, surplus uh, is in positive. Uh, overall budgetary position of the center. So, so it is showing that fiscal surplus. No, no, it is not surplus actually. Overall fiscal sur overall surplus. Hmm? Deficit. Huh? Deficit is in negative. Revenue surplus, positive, uh, negative is in, uh, okay. Overall surplus and uh, fiscal deficit gross. No, 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 fiscal, that's this wrong actually. This is not, uh, because fiscal deficit was always there with the government of India. So let me check the other numbers. Overall budgetary position, fiscal deficit gross net. Mm. Fiscal deficit. Yeah. So let me turn the pages. Fiscal deficit of the center and states as percent of GST. Yeah? So, uh, as percent of center from 1991, 6.42 uh, fiscal deficit, and that is you know somewhat uh, going down 99, 2000, 5 percent is fiscal deficit, 5.46, 2000. So, then look at this 4, 5, 3 point, no, and then 2.54 by 7, 8. 7 8. Huh? Look at this. So, this is the golden year of India's economic growth 2007 8. Now, why I am saying this? Now, I, I, I still remember very clearly Manmohan Singh was presenting the budget. Okay? Uh, not Manmohan Singh, Manmohan Singh was the pri prime minister then. Finance minister was presenting, but Manmohan Singh was giving a statement in the parliament. I remember. That year, our GDP growth rate touched 9.7%. Real growth rate was 9.7, and we are very close to record 10 percentage growth. Manmohan Singh has really, you know, that happiness was reflected on his face. So he was really happy that very soon we will be achieving double digit growth because that time we were comparing with our you know, India's growth with China. China recorded you no know, double digit growth for almost three decades, starting from 1978 you know, up to 2010-11. It had almost 20 percentage growth, and you know, we are nowhere you no know, 20 percentage. But then we are close to 10 percent. So when your GDP is growing at such a rate, your revenue collection will also grow because income is growing. So revenue collection will also grow. So that's how it helped the government of India to bring down the deficits. 
okay and that's how you see here 2.5 fold and then in the next year jo nazar lag gaya manmohan singh ka growth rate par aur hasi par no crisis financial crisis in the uh, no west so immediately we had to give the stimulus package and you see here no 5.99 means 6% as deficit all of sudden jump from 2.5 for to because of the stimulus package because the stabilization function is government of india then 6.4 again we are trying to somehow achieve the fiscal discipline 3.24 by 2017 18 covid ka nazar fir se lag gaya and now we are here okay we are here uh, what has happened in 2021 9.2% as fiscal deficit does never no even before even during co- our financial crisis 2008 9 we never had such fall such a high level of fiscal deficit so covid has again brought so anyway so uh, if you know see the fiscal discipline rule of government of india and state governments uh, then we can say that state governments have complied and they have over complied isn't it because i showed you that no our fiscal deficits have remained no less than uh, 2 percentage less than 3 percentage this is the no picture and for the government of india always exceed and we are when we are trying to reach the target kiska nazar lag jata hai okay because 2008 crisis now covid and you can't blame also government of india for that because stabilization function has to be done by government of india in, in, in fact after doing all these things also we are criticizing okay that modi is not doing this nirmala sitaraman is not doing anything so that is not fact okay so uh, so now we are uh, you know following a rule based fiscal policy and in fact that is also the reason why uh, now there is a discussion in 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 the among the ex- fiscal experts that we have to revise the frbm you know uh, setting now fiscal responsibility is too rigidity it has it is too rigid and uh, we have to go for a relaxed you no know, liberal frbm setting no why in fact if you read the 15 finance commission report it is written very clearly that we have to revise the fis- rule based fiscal policy and ho- and what kind of relaxation we should do in, in fact in first chapter itself it is written so i, I have told you to read the first chapter of uh, 15 finance commission so it is saying that uh, now that see in 2008 we faced a crisis in 2011 uh, sorry 1920 we faced the crisis covid 19 has come now in such a situation since we are holding on the frbm rules states are afraid states are not spending no because states think that okay government of india's mind will change they will bring a legislation they will say you have to be be disciplined and uh, if we go for you no know, a liberal spending during a crisis then we will lose the grants next year so why to you no know, relax our hands so go conservative that's what no they are doing they are behaving in a very miser way and uh, uh, and particularly the poor states who are not spending so this is not a good thing so there is a discussion that the frbm should allow no or it should give some exemptions during a time of crisis and again again if you see also that uh, see crisis came for two years now if you spend more you cannot all of sudden come back to normal within two years because if you have borrowed more money means you have to pay interest rate so that the burden will be reflected in coming to 3 years so then what should be the strategy okay, that now needs to be reworked and finance commission at fitin finance commission has recommended for such a thing okay and uh, i think we will stop here today okay and uh, hmm. is my recording